to the channel. So it's still locked down and I thought this would be a good opportunity on this episode to talk about the kit. Now I've been vlogging for a year so I've kind of gone through quite lots of bits of kit and what I've done is I've kind of got down to the kit that I mostly carry and I mostly use. So I'm going to go through my vlog setup and if you've seen my videos you'll understand what I mean by I try to get every cam camera angle that I can, I try and get my sort of drone footage in to create that kind of being with me as we ride kind of effect. Now I'm going to go through each piece of kit, I'm going to go through the negatives and I'm going to obviously end on the positives. Now like I said this kit is taking me quite a lot of money and quite a lot of time to build up together but if you're a vlogger and you're thinking about improving what you've got or you're thinking of starting it then this will hopefully give you some kind of guidance to the way sort of I do it and the reason why I use my kit. Now, what I want to say is, is that all my kit now is obviously, it's not old, but it's getting old. So you can buy all this stuff on Fleabay second hand and probably get some for a bargain and save yourself some money. So, there is a better kit out there and if you can afford it, obviously the more money you spend on the kit that I've got, the newer versions, the better the quality is going to be and I'll explain a little bit of that as we go. But anyway, let's crack to all the kit that I use. Cue the intro, let's go. Okay, so I want to start with what I use on my helmet to record that forward facing footage. Now, a lot of people stick a GoPro on the front and they get a little microphone and it attaches it in. Now, I've kind of got a few issues with that. When you've got a massive GoPro stuck on your helmet and it's blatantly obvious everywhere you're going that you're recording, that can be a little bit off-putting for other people. Also, you don't really know when you're recording because you press it and you hold the record button and you've got one long, long, long load of footage that you've got to go through. Now. There's some downsides though to this Senna 10C Pro. Now one is the battery life, and two, to be honest, it's a little bit fiddly to actually use. But once you know where it is and you get used to it, it's pretty good. So the massive plus side to this is it's an all-in-one built-in system. So it's obviously comms and everything else, but for the but for, but for the motor vlogger, it's a camera that's got the speakers that will talk to you to tell you it's switched on. Phone connected. It's got the speakers, obviously you can press a button, it tells you it's recorded and then obviously it tells you it's stopped recording. So you know at that point that you can stop talking or you've got the one bit of footage that you want and you're not having to go through loads and loads and loads. Recording. Recording stopped. Now it's got a 1080p camera. Now the problem with the 1080p camera is it's, it's all good for your general sort of blogging, but 4K is just that bit better. So what I find with the 10 series is that it does a good job, it's watchable, it's quite clear, the, 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 the sound of your voice through this is actually quite high but you can turn it down in editing. So again, it's pretty good for that, you don't get a lot of wind noise. But what I try and say about the camera is, is, that, is that at 1080p, if you're watching it on a big screen, it's just not as good as when you're going to run a 4K. So it kind of lets you down a little bit on the camera, but it's, it's good enough to do what you need to do. Okay, so what I want to talk about is the camera that I use as my general camera. Now, as a vlogger, you want a camera that you can pick up, you can talk to, you know if you move your hand, it's stabilised, it will pick up your sound, it's good of getting rid of that wind noise. Now, no camera off of its actual microphone is going to be perfect, but there, this camera I've picked is really good at what it does. Now, it's the Osmo Action, and the Osmo Action is basically their version of the GoPro killer, what basically was the GoPro 7. It's a 4K camera, there's loads of different modes in there, but what's most important of it is you can get it out of the box, you set it up, and it, just on standard settings, it's pretty good to go. Now, again, like I'm saying, is that you want a camera you can just pull out and you can talk to. Now, one of the things that I do with my Osmo Action to be able to put it on the bike, get take it off quickly and use it, I use these. So what I use to be able to clip onto the bike and attach the Osmo Action is one of these. Now, this is like a crocodile clip, and obviously it's got the bendable top to it. Now, the problem with these is, and I kid you not, I've probably gone through about five of these now. They're absolutely brilliant, because you can clip your camera on, you just clip it onto the bike handlebars, you can adjust it to get your frame right, you can move it left, right, you can change all the different camera angles. But the problem what you've got of it is, is that these, after one adventure, do this. 
and basically you get the smallest smallest split in here and it basically it's dangerous because you could lose your camera and it's just too flexible so I'll show you the difference this is one that's not broke and you can see the difference in stiffness so they're really good and you pay about 15 pounds for one of these but do not expect it to like last massively long it's an expensive thing to sort of use but really really handy so what i suggest of it is, is you probably have one of these but then you look at a better fixed mount to your actual bike what i'm actually about to do and i've actually ordered for my bike because i'm sick of buying these so that'll be coming up in a future video but that there they are good as i say to get different angles you can clip it onto a fence do your ride buys etc etc so they're quite cracking bits of kit okay so one of the things i'd always advise to have and i call it the camera that you're not as bothered about and why i'm saying that is is you want a camera that you can literally leave um at the side of the road in the right place to catch your shot but say for instance somebody ran over it or they nicked it you're going to be annoyed but it's not going to cost you the world now what I use for that is, it's called a Sessions, and it's a Sessions 4 camera, and I picked this up for about £100 on eBay, and that was quite a long time ago, so you've probably been picking it up cheaper now. It's a 1080p again, but it's got a wide sort of lens, um, so it means that you can really capture that shot of you sweeping by as you go as you're going around. And again, if you've seen one of my previous videos, I was very lucky because a Land Rover basically went over the camera it didn't actually touch the camera but it went over the camera and the wheel was so close it just missed it and again i would have been like no if it had happened but because it's that camera that i know is not the best but really handy because it's super small you can put it in your pocket or your rucksack it weighs nothing it's just a great camera to use for that reason so i want to talk about the downsides to this little camera and this is the gopro session 4. now the downside to it is it does has it doesn't have any built-in stabilization. So if you've seen a few of my sort of earlier videos when I used it as almost my main camera, there's if you if you shake, it's just not great. So you kind of get that shaky effect. The, the volume sound out of it's pretty good. It's quite good again at the wind protection with the built-in mic, but it's just got no stabilization. Now I know a lot of people will turn around and say you can buy, you know, in your edit, in your editing software, you can do all of that. It's just not the best. I'd rather be able to have a camera with it built in that I can just quickly and easily take off, cut where I want it to be, and it's done. I don't want to be waiting around stabilising it. Is it come out okay, etc., etc. So this really is a cracking camera as that kind of backup spare camera you don't want leaving on the side of a fence as you ride by, or you can get out and you can kind of crap something really nice and quick with when you're sort of filming. So it's great for that, and I always would say have a backup camera, and this is a cracking one. Okay, next up is one of the cameras that is probably one of the coolest cameras that I've ever bought. Now, there is some downsides, and I'll explain the downsides because they're quite simple. You need a good computer to have this camera because what you do is when you use this camera, because it takes so much footage, it takes absolutely ages and ages and ages to render. And then if you've not got a good computer, you will be sat there for absolutely ages. And that is because it's a 360 camera. Now this is the GoPro Fusion 360. And again, I bought the second hand off of eBay. I think I paid something like 160 pounds, maybe 170 pounds. The thing about the GoPro is the downsides to it is, it's quite simple, is that it takes a massive, huge amount of footage, a whole 360 with its two cameras, and it does it up to 5K. So for you to render that footage, because you literally have to load it on, snip it into loads of bits, it's a time consuming camera is what I'm trying to say. And then you have to render it. And if you don't have a really quick computer, then you will be there for hours and hours and hours. So you need a decent, well-powered machine to be able to run this camera. Now, the huge plus side of this camera is, is if you've seen some of my latest footage, is that the foot is that what you can capture with it is absolutely incredible because you can zoom right out you can zoom right in you can sort of get the software so it follows you around so it basically does a whole heap of cameras work in one so if i wanted to um for instance get a, a, a face shot of me with more of the handlebars back i can zoom back and it will give me that effect of the handlebars being there and at the same time i can go do you know what? i want i want another shot of me being able to twist the throttle well again i can then in the software, I can pick my hand, I can zoom in a bit, 
get the moment of me turning the throttle and I can render that out as a clip. So I can make loads of little clips to put in. Now, this wouldn't be my be all and end all camera for me at all because of the amount of time that it takes. But for those short little clips that you want to put in, like you pulling off with the whole, as much as the bike as possible that you can get, this is the camera tab. It's got so many tricks, it's fantastic. Just remember the time it's going to take to use it. But like I said, the footage you can get from it, it pretty much wipes out having to have a camera facing you at all as an extra because it can just do all of that footage at once. So that's great. That's a great extra with absolutely fantastic footage to have. Okay, so now in my opinion, it's quite vital to be able to catch what I like to call aerial footage and at the moment I'm really liking the follow me features if I can get out where I've got quite clear skies and not a lot of trees around me and I think to be able to do that or if you're visiting a place on your bike as part of your vlog that you can sort of take off and you can show everybody it from the air and you get breathtaking breathtaking footage now I've gone through a few drones I really really have um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to crack straight onto the drone that I use I use the DJI Spark now again, I bought this second hand off of eBay. I paid something like, I don't know, it was in 300 pound mark, maybe going up to 400 pound. I can't remember exactly because it came with batteries and controller. But what I'll say is, it's worth spending that extra money on a drone because you can buy cheaper drones as you've seen, I'll probably, you know, if you're watching in my old videos, and they're just not the best. Now the gimbal in this works really well. Now there's a couple of downsides, so I'm gonna put them straight out, straight away. Currently, at least in the UK, where you are, you'd have to look at this, but I've got to have a license because it weighs more than 250 grams. So you have to go online, you have to basically look at a booklet style thing to be able to understand the rules. Then you go and answer like a questionnaire style thing. And if you pass that, then they basically give you a number for your drone. And then you've also got to pay for like a licensing fee. So it's, a, it's not a lot, I can't remember exact figures, but it's not a lot of money, but it's a negative because you have to go out and learn stuff. I mean, it's good because of safety, but you know what I mean, it's another expense. So that's the negative to this drone. And the reason I say for this drone is because you can now buy a newer version, what is, you know, it's better in some ways, in some ways it's not, but it weighs less, something like 249 kilograms. It means you don't need that license, you just need to register yourself. That's the registration bit is all you need to do. So. That's really cool for the new drone. But anyway, back to this. So this drone has been, you know, an interesting one. The other downside I should turn around and say is, is that it's not a light drone. It's not really, really heavy, but it's not a super light drone. Um, they're the only negatives I can come up with for this. Or oh, one more thing as well is it's only like a two-state gimbal instead of a three. So you can get a little bit jerky for, like footage, but a little bit of practice and time and obviously cutting down in the editing you can take most of that out, if not could it take it all out at all. But anyway, go to the positives. Now, wow, <laughs> this little thing and the footage that I've managed to catch with it has been the best footage of the drones I've ever had. It is fantastic. It's not massively expensive for what you get and it's got some really awesome features. The active track, you select yourself, you click go and it will follow you. It's got crash avoider sensors all on the front. so. It will pretty much avoid most objects. The one thing I'll turn around and say is about that really quickly is, is if you're going to hit a tree with its branches hanging out, it might struggle and crash, especially if it's going at speed. Just bear that in mind. But anyway, it's got avoided, it's got the, um, it's got avoidance sensors that do a really, really good job most of the time. Um, but it's also really good because it will automatically come back to you when the batteries are low, so you can play with the settings to make it super safe so you don't lose the drone. Um, it's just a cracking bit of kit. It's dead easy to fly, it can automatically take off, it can automatically land, and like I said, it will come home by itself. So even if you do end up losing sight of it for any reason, you can go, I can't see it, I don't know where it is, whack the return to home button, and it comes back. Now, the other plus side to this drone, of what, what a lot of the cheaper drones don't have, it takes its own SD card. So the footage that you're getting is 1080p again on this camera, and it's pure 1080p, where a lot of the cheaper ones, all they'll do is it will send it to your phone through your Wi-Fi, and you lose signal a lot quicker than you think on height-wise, and it's a bit glitchy, where this, you'll get that pure drone footage. You do also get it on your phone, so you can have a flip through, make sure you're happy with it, but generally, you get all the footage that you need on this drone. Like I said, super simple to fly, super easy, grab yourself a license, you can pick them up cheaper now because obviously a newer version's come out, so you probably get yourself a really, really good deal. I got two batteries. What I'm trying to say is minimum of two if you're if you're going out doing what I do because one drone you'll get about 15 minutes of life out of the drone. What is 
actually quite a lot, believe it or not, when you're filming. So having two gives you that half an hour. Um, so yeah, cracking bit of kit, that's pretty much one of the best buys that I've bought when it comes down to uh, what I do as an actual blog. So yeah, crack it. Okay, so my setup is pretty much like this. I use my Osmo Action as my face-to-face -face camera that does an amazing job of stabilization. It has a camera on the front of it so I can see directly, as I'm using it right now, I can see what I'm doing so I know I'm in shot and I know where I want to be. And it's great because it does a really good job, like I said, on stabilization. The microphone works really good. Sometimes, yes, you do get the horrible wind noise or something else or vibration. But most of the time, it is an unbelievable camera. And I'd buy another one. And that's always a thing for me. If I'd go, if it broke tomorrow, I'd be shopping on eBay for another one of these second hand. And if I couldn't get one second hand, I'd pay full price because I think it's the best camera that I've actually got. And it's the one that's 4K cracking so i use the 360 camera now the 360 camera is fantastic because it does those shots like i said you can put it as far back on the handlebars using the device i showed you earlier or and you've seen future videos i've got a new version coming up that will make sure that i don't get any kind of vibrations anyway so i use the 360 camera to get those amazing shots and me curving on the bike and stuff like this and it gives the person who's watching that sense that you're actually leaning and it's not just the camera going with the bike it does amazingly. The stuff you can use that for is fantastic. Then, of course, like I said, I've got my chuckable camera, my Session 4. Quite simply, I can stick it anywhere. I can ride off. Anything happens to it, I'm not going to cry. So it's quite good. That's good to have. And then, obviously, what is fantastic and brilliant is the Senna 10C Pro. Now, there is little fixes I've talked about in other videos to do battery life, etc. And basically, what I do is I plug a little portable battery uh, bank in my pocket, plugged into it. Keeps it going for ages. And, you know, it's not the crystal clear on the 10C, but it's adequate for what I need it to do. And it's just small, it's compact, you can press it, turn it on, you know you're recording, capture what you want to capture, you can turn it off again. That, and then you can start listening to your music, so you can chill out for a bit while you're thinking about what you're going to do next. Or if you've got your wife on the back with comms, you can chat away or a mate. So it's really, really cool. It's easy. Nobody actually looks at it and goes, oh, he's got a massive camera stuck to the front of his face. He must be filming, he must be doing this. It's just dead handy because you can leave it switched on, you can go and book into your hotel room, walk up your stairs, capture all that stuff and nobody really knows that you're recording so it's it, you know it's got a little bit of stealthness that's pretty cool so when it comes down to it as well the drone it's a cracking piece of kit dead easy to fly the camera works really well it picks up good quality video and it's got all the good features like follow me tripod mode so you can get steer the shots it's a cracking drone now that's my entire camera sort of setup and the reason why is because as a motor vlogger what people don't generally like to see is just one camera in one fixed position and someone just continuously talking. They want to keep seeing you swapping to different shots because what that does is, is that it keeps them engaged into what they're watching. So they're not just sitting there thinking, I'm just watching somebody riding down a normal piece of road here. They're seeing the wheels turn, the action happening. And then obviously you've got to go to your drone shots. So you're only getting some sort of stuff with the nice music playing. So, you know, that's the reason why the setup is what I've got, is because it all works in its different ways. So that's my current sort of motor vlog setup. And if you watch a few of my latest videos, one of my latest trips to do with taking the bike, uh, the Honda Monkey bike up a mountain, you'll see all these different elements come into play and you'll go, actually, I know what camera that is. And I know how that works. And you might go, do you know what? I'm going to shop around and I'm going to buy exactly the same kit because I know I can get it cheap and look what this guy can do and he's not amazing I'm going to do better and crack on with that and do that because do you know what it's a great bit of fun doing motor vlogging now what I'm trying to say is now if we're talking perfect budget this current time okay and I'm talking if I had more money because I'm like everyone else in lockdown I am lucky enough to be classed as a key worker I'm lucky enough to be on full pay but I live my life basically my extras is the overtime that I earn, and I currently can't earn any overtime. So my channel is now only being funded, really, by my patrons. Um, so, you know, again, thank you to them, because every patron I get just helps this channel go that bit further. But anyway, going back to unlimited money to do with kit. Now, if I had all the money in the world that I could spend on kit, this is would be my perfect ideal setup. And this is would cost quite a lot more money than what mine does. But anyway... I'd buy the new Senna Evo, that's a 4K camera. I'd, again, I said only reason is because it's so compact and easy to use, and a 4K camera is just better quality videos. So I'd be buying the Evo for a start, the Senna Evo, exactly the same camera, just a modern version, 4K. 
Then I'd probably turn around and say I would buy from there. I'd keep my Osmo Action as 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 a brilliant camera, and I'd probably mount that more on my chest to get more face forward, sort of from the handlebar point of view. I would buy myself a palm style camera now uh, DJI do a version of that as well and another one does it called I think Fuji or whatever they're called and it's a very small camera and it's got a gimbal and I want to be able to attach that so I can pull it off I can chat into it it's really small dead handy to carry I'd be buying myself one of them for my face to face walking along talking being able to hold out when I'm on the bike get some good footage and then obviously the 360 do you know what i would probably stick with the Fusion at the minute because I do like the way that it works I probably might look at other 360s but I'd buy the new I think it's called the Fusion Max. So I'd spend that because it's got a front screen, what's dead, dead handy. That would be my 360, would be the most modern one. Again, probably the quality is the same, but it's got that forward facing camera. Now, obviously, my chuck away camera, I'd rather have even better quality. So I've had all the money in the world. I'd probably look at buying myself a, another either Osmo Action or at currently market wise, would be the GoPro 8 because it's obviously the better one, it's newer, um, and I'd like to have a play with that. So I'd probably have that as what I call my chuck away camera. Again, this is with I've had all the money because I wouldn't be chucking away uh, a GoPro 8. So the final piece of kit, if I had the wish list dream, would be for the drone, would probably be the Mavic Pro 2. Um, DJI again and that's because it can fly a lot further away it's a lot quicker to keep up with the bike and again it's 4k quality camera oh I'd buy that if not better the best DJI I could afford that it still would fit in my rut in my rucksack because they're easy to fly and the better quality footage and the distance is quite a big thing if I can have drone further back following me I'll probably feel a bit more safer with trees and things that would be my perfect, 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 perfect list if I had the money to do it. Anyway, I hope this has massively helped. You've seen what setup I've used. If you're starting up, feel free to copy the setup because it's a cracking setup. And when I say I've gone through lots of different cameras, lots of different drones, lots of bits and bobs to make the make this work the way that it works for me, that I really have save yourself the money. Just copy that as a, as a base package and you can make some amazing, amazing vlogs. Anyway, hopefully this has helped you make those decisions that you want to make. I know it's not the exciting video that I normally make, but hey, we're in lockdown, you've got to do what you've got to do. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button because the more subscribers, the better for me. You can hit a bell button when you see my next probably silly, stupid, fun, crazy video that I make. Don't even know what yet. You will get that and uh, you'll be able to know that it's on and you can watch it instead of just hopefully browsing across it if you're lucky. And the thumbs up. Please give us a thumbs up. The more people that give me a thumbs up, the better. You will always get your keyboard warriors who will give you a thumb down for no reason, just for speaking. So a thumbs up is really, really good for me. Anyway, have a lovely week and I will see you next week, hopefully for a brighter, better video if we're allowed out. Anyway, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye. <laughs>